Hello and welcome to episode three in the Blender Absolute Beginner tutorial series. I'm really excited about this lesson today because we're gonna learn exactly what a mesh is and we're gonna make our first one. I know we've been dabbling around a bit with actually learning the interface and everything, but today we're gonna jump in, we're gonna draw something, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, open up Blender. Uh, everything's just like we left it in the last episode couple of different user settings but everything's pretty much default so go ahead get rid of the splash screen uh, we're gonna look at the cube the cubes selected by default hit tab to go to edit mode and you'll notice it has these little points on the corners now oh, my system wants my attention here okay so you'll notice these points on the corners these are called vertices let me zoom in for you each corner is a vertex and between two vertexes, vertices, you have a line. That line is an edge, or I'll probably just call it a line, and I'll probably just call the vertex a point. Um, in between these lines, you have a face. Now, faces, when you actually render the object and you look at it, like you're playing a video game and it's your model that you made in Blender or you made a movie and you're looking at it, what you see are just the faces. The edges and the corners, the points and the lines are not rendered ever. Just the faces are rendered. So the faces are what really make up your object. But the faces have to be made up of the points and the lines. All together, all of the points and lines are what's called a mesh. The mesh, typically you can just call it mesh. Um, any object that you make in Blender is a mesh. I mean, for example, this camera is not a mesh, but the cube is a mesh. Uh, you can, for example, say we want to go to add up on top. There's a whole list of meshes that we can just stick in there, pre-made things. Um, some cool ones to look at, but a mesh just refers to a collection of vertices and lines and faces. And it's usually talking about some object in Blender. So. Now that you know what a mesh is, we're going to go ahead and make our first one, and this is going to be great. So you're in edit mode, You new key to learn today is A. Uh, if you hit A, it'll deselect everything. If you hit it again, it'll select everything you want. Um, also we're going to get rid of, we're going to hide those, those uh, X, Y, and Z axes on the cube. We're going to hide those for a little bit to make it easier to draw. So hold down control and hit space and bam they're gone now hit x we don't want the cube so we're going to delete it x means delete i think if you hit delete it brings up the same menu um, and then we're just gonna oh i got rid of it so hit x and then click vertices we're going to delete all the vertices and that deletes all the lines that are connected to them and all the faces made around them so the next key we're going to learn is 7 on the numpad, and this is what's called a perfect view. Let me hit it and you'll see what I mean. 7 arranges the view so that it's perfectly lined up with the X and Y axes. The X is the left and right here, and Y is up and down. The Z is in and out of this plane, but we're perfectly lined up so you can't even see the Z axis. This is good because we're just going to draw a 2D mesh, so it kind of gives the illusion that it's all 2D for now. So let's draw something. And the way we'll do that is we're going to draw it point by point or vertex by vertex. And that's not typically how it's done when you want a professional model, but this is great for instructional purposes. So that's how we're going to start out. You can draw whatever you want today. I'm going to draw a star just because it's cool, it's simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold down control and you're gonna left click. I got the clicks right this time. I know I made some mistakes last time, but hold down control, left click, and boom, you'll see that little orange point there. That's a vertex, I just made that. And so we're gonna draw them in series, hold down control, keep holding it down, and draw the next one. And you'll see they're connected automatically by an edge or a line. And I'm gonna keep going until I kind of have a star. And forgive me, I'm not really a great artist. But, important here, notice, don't close the loop. The loop won't automatically close uh, if you hit a, a vertex really close to here. 
it won't close the loop. You'll just have two really close vertices. So what you want to do then to join them is you want to make a face. Now we're going to make faces to fill in this whole star. Right now there's no faces, it's just a bunch of lines and points. But remember the faces are what gets rendered, so we need those faces to actually see something in our final image. So to make a face, the faces can only be three or four sided. They can only be triangles or quadrangles. Um, nothing more than that. If you have more points than that, they're typically called n-gons, as in n number of sided polygons. Uh, Blender does not support n-gons at this point in time. In the future it might. But stick to triangles and quadrangles for now and you'll be good. So what we do, notice one of the points is orange, the rest are black. That means that one vertex is highlighted. And we're going to hold down shift and we're going to right click on two others that are adjacent to just find the ones that we want to make a face out of. So you notice I have these three and I want to make a face. So I just hit F, the letter F. And there it is, there's my face. And I'll go around and I'll fill in the rest of these, just like that. Remember holding down shift. So you select the first one with the right click, hold down shift to select multiple in addition to that, and then hit F. Uh, again, that's right clicking, holding down shift to select multiple, as I right click on the others and then hit F. And just fill this in piece by piece. And you'll notice, I forgot to point this out, but you'll notice I didn't close the loop over here, but when I added the face, it closed that loop. When I added the face, it automatically made all of the edges, even though there weren't edges on, on two of those parts. So that's why when you're making a 2D shape, for example, you don't need to close the loop. In fact, it'll mess you up if you try to. So just get almost there to the the point before it and then make a face to close that loop. And let's fill in this middle part here with the same way, right clicking, holding down shift to select multiple points and then hit F to fill in that face. And notice they've all been triangles so far. I'm going to go for the quadrangle right here in this middle piece, almost a square. Perfect. So there's my star and I'm going to hit A to deselect everything. And it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? That's a great star. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to try to fix it a little bit. It's not the greatest. I'll admit that. So I'm going to select, well, let's say this one here, and I want to move it. So I hit G and just once hit G. And then when I move the mouse around now, I'm not holding down anything. It'll move this point around wherever I move it and then I have to left click to set it. If I right click, it'll put it back to where it started, but if I left click, it'll set it to where it's at. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a few with the right click, hit G, and then move them to where I want them and left click. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little bit to just kind of make this star a little more like a star and you can see it kind of adjusts all the edges and makes all the lines exactly how they should be. It's a really nice tool for just fixing things. And it's G because it's the grab tool. And so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with the scroll wheel. And you notice that's a lot better star than what I could draw just freehand. It's still not great, but whatever. All right. So now that I have the star, and oh, one more thing about the grab is if you want to lock it to a specific axis, like say, let's say I want to move this point, but I don't want to move it up and down. I just want to move it left and right. Well, that, so that sounds easy enough in two dimensions, but when you're dealing with three dimensions and the 2D view, it's kind of hard to to get it just where you want it. So it has these tools when you have, when you've hit G, you can lock it to an axis by hitting X, Y, or Z. So if I just want to have to move it in the X and Y direction, left and right, or sorry, X direction, left and right, I hit X on the keyboard and you'll see I can only move it along the X axis from where it started. And then if I hit Y, I can only move it along the Y axis. And 
Let me set it here and I'll show you why this is cool. Notice this is a 2D object still. You can hold down that scroll wheel button and rotate it. And you'll see I was actually quite far below the axis there. Um, even still, if I want to make this 3D and I come up in like a perspective view on it and I hit G and I want to move it, well going up and down it kind of goes left and right and it kind of goes all over and it's hard to control. But if I want to hit Z, I can just move it straight up and straight down. How nice is that? So I could actually do that with all of these edges here. Just select them with a the right click, hit G, and then hit Z, and move them straight up. And I could make this from a 2D thing into a, a 3D thing really, really easily. And so go ahead, and what you want to do is pick a shape that you want to draw, and get in there, draw it point by point, fill in those faces, and adjust it, play with it, make the shape right, and then maybe try and make it a little 3D just by hitting the grab tool and dragging it in different directions. Now, next week, what we're gonna do is play with that cube that we start with, that we deleted off the bat. We're gonna start with that, and we're gonna manipulate that using some cool tools and turn it into something better than just a cube. I'll save the surprise for next week though. Alright, thanks guys for watching and I will see you next time.